Good evening. So actually, I came back uh, last night. I came back from the Boston MIT uh, to give my talk about the uh, Rodney Brooks redesigning <coughs> workshop. Anyhow, uh, I prepared 81 slides. Therefore, I suppose maybe 80, 30 seconds I have to switch the slides. Anyhow, so as Takashi uh, introduced, I'm a professor of the university, and uh, I'm not a cognitive science. I'm not a psychologist. I'm just a robotics researcher. But my desire is uh, to make a robot to speak something. Okay. Also, I'm not a research director of the JST Elato project, and uh, we recently renewed our page. So please uh, visit uh, geat.jp. You can uh, enjoy the many video clips and so on. And also, uh, I'm one of the founder of the Robocup Federations. So first of all, I'd like to show you some video clips from the, the Robocup. I suppose maybe, have you ever seen the Robocup before? Please raise your hand. Oh, okay, okay, okay. There are many, many, many. So uh, uh, this indicates that, you know, uh, I believe, uh, unfortunately, the Sony already retired the robot business. Therefore, we cannot see any more. But it's very, very interesting. So the, in this case, the hardware are fixed. So there are many teams uh, you know, participate by using the, the programs, so the competition of the programs. It has many degrees for them, but the working style is already converged because you know, we send the you know, work and information of the celebrity. And then one team uh, found that this is the uh, best, uh, like best working or the running of this robot from your blender. <laughs> <laughs> it's a kind of uh, yeah, it has many degrees for them. <laughs> And also, uh, we introduced the human leg since 2002. And this is the 2004. And still uh, not the game, but the PK. So Team Osaka, the, the uh, head coach is uh, Professor Hiroshi Ichiguro. OK. So it has a uh, middle champion camera on top. And then, stop. And this is going right there. <laughs> actually, actually, this time it was allowed. But uh, now it was not allowed. OK. Anyway, so we decide the direction. And then they set up to kick. <laughs> and it's changed. <laughs> Very cute. And then. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> And since as I said, we had the first match between the robot team and human team. Because uh, uh, the final goal of the robot camp is to be the team of the 11 humans that get a win against the human World Cup champion team by 2050. So only 32 years left. So anyhow, the, this time, the robot team is the champion team of the Middle Side League. And then the, uh, the human team consists of the robot Cup trusted because you know, no play can happen. Anyhow, this time, the robot did not have any arms, therefore the free kick. But uh, everything automatically decided by the robot team. That team is a computer control. So uh, one player comes in and then make a free kick. Okay, this time, uh, we painted the, uh, the ball in the color in red because the uh, image processing captured the image of the ball position and also was, uh, the ball is... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is followed by the robot team. Because this time, the robot team had not prepared for the match with the human teams, just the exhibition. Therefore, the human teams just about, are supposed to be the obstacle. So uh, this is like the Peter Stone, the uh, US trustees, and he's very good at playing the soccer. Okay. So uh, I'd like to show the bit more. OK, so the major shoot. OK, so the score was 2-2-0. Two, two, the robot team lost. But anyhow, it's a very, very interesting uh, game. So uh, I'd like to share a little bit more, because uh, there was a, a very exciting situation of that the goalie of the robot team make a good, start, a good saving. OK, so anyhow, so start, we start from the kickoff of the robot team. OK, so in the robot team, top has the uh, only direction of your system to point it out to the upwards. And then there was a phone mirror, and then captured the whole image. OK, so uh, the robot team tried to get uh, the ball and uh, also interrupt the, you know, the pass and so on. And then, OK, so uh, the back pass, <coughs> and then okay. at this time, the body make a good save. OK, so this is a 2007. 
So the color is uh, the gold color is painted in red, and also the figure size is this one. But the last year, this is the final of the little size way. You can see the very huge hues, and also the, uh, the gold is not painted red or red anymore. So the, also gold is normal gold. So that kind of challenge is a visual construction. Okay, so uh, this is fine again, and uh, I suppose maybe the blue is a team from Europe, and the red is from China. So uh, the blue team makes a cut, and then two. Yeah, this is a very nice game. So this year we have the Global Cup 2012 in Mexico City this June. So please, if you have time, please visit there. So this is the interaction. So uh, today I like to talk about the four or five topics. So uh, my desire is you know, like to make the robot much more intelligent. But what is the intelligence? What, how, uh, why the you know, human can be intelligent? Therefore, that's a big question. So therefore, we focus on the, you know, the development of the human, uh, human development uh, by using the, you know, to, to study about the human develop development by using the robots. Okay, so how do humans and the human de develop? So what's the human development? Okay, so I was born in 1953, and uh, this is the elementary school, junior high school, and high school students. And uh, when I was an undergraduate student, I was married. And then uh, I was in the United, uh, University of Maryland in the US one year, and this is the first robot camp, and I enjoyed the karaoke in Shanghai. <laughs> this is a typical human development. Okay. <laughs> Anyhow, so uh, this comes from the uh, textbook of the new science. So uh, you can see that how the early brain developed. So every two days, 18 days from conception, 18 days, 20 days, 22, 24, every two days, the embryo changing and form some structure of the you know, brain, like this one. So in these days, maybe the gene coding may be dominant to make uh, you know, some structure of the brain. But after 24 or 25 weeks, so the almost same structure, maybe the brain, uh, uh, almost same structure as adults. The, uh, the features of pain, but the connection not complete. So uh, about the, some, uh, the behavior and the, the sensations, what's going on in the womb? So this axis indicates how many weeks after the conception, and the blood graphs indicate the, what kind of behavior. For example, the sucking and swallow already happened around the, the 12 or 13 weeks. On the other hand, about the sensation. So the first sensation is attached around the 10 weeks or something, and then the auditory vision started around the, uh, before you know, 20 weeks. So currently, we can see the same uh, the movement of the fetus. For example, in the 26 weeks, you can see that fetus catch his or her own face so often, okay? And also, this size shows the 36 weeks, just before the birth. So the you know, or the fetus open the eyes or open the mouth and so on. Okay. So the many people suppose that so there's a kind of learning may happen after the birth, but the probably before the birth something happened already. And after the birth, there are different kind of behaviors the new uh, newborn baby obtain. For example, at six months, the hand legal, just look at the hand, and. Uh, this kind of behavior is supposed to be the kind of the line of the pore and the inverse model of the hand. Okay. So the number indicates the month, age, and the blue indicates the, the uh, you know, in front of behavior, and the black indicates you know, some kind of a learning target from the viewpoint of the robotics. So at the sixth month, fingers as a case, that is the integration of the visual tactile sensation of the face. And at the seventh month, Drops the object and observes the result. This is very, very important, the causality and permanency of the object. And also, at this month, we hit the object, or drop the brain, and imitate the movement, the glass pens, and so on. So just one year, <coughs> the newborn baby obtained so much different, so different kind of behaviors. So we are sure, we, the robotics researcher, cannot build a such a robot just one year. Therefore, many people suppose that, okay, so from the beginning, something happened. So the big argument, nature versus nature, 
This guy is not literary, and he mentions that versus is wrong. So the, no longer is it nature versus nature, but nature by uh, nature by nature. So nowadays, nature side and nature side closely related in the different levels, and then this makes uh, our humans. Okay. So uh, the point is that for the from the viewpoint of the Darwin theory, to what extent we embed the something, and to what extent we can expect some learning from the environment. So we designed this robot. Have you ever seen this one? See the sphere? Please raise your hand. In the okay, thanks. So this robot is our first introduction of the baby robots. Actually, this is 1.3 meter and 33 kilograms. The not of the baby, but the proportion is a very huge head. <coughs> Therefore, uh, we suppose that a half year month, a half year. It has a 52 degrees of freedom, or a uh, yes in the type, and the whole body covered with skin. Uh, silicon skin. And then this, we put on the 200 tactile sensors, and also it has uh, visions, and also the auditory, and the, uh, yeah, right. So uh, we embed some kind of reflexive behavior, for example, react to the sound, react to the lighting direction, uh, light, lighting, and also we embed some preference with the lighting direction. So this is why see this here, just look for the, you know, the lighting direction. And then also, uh, he tried to turn out and seek for the light. Yeah. So we have shown this video clip to the, uh, you know, the medical doctors, and who mentioned that this type of behavior is not normal kids, but maybe it's autistic children. Because uh, autistic children, uh, the normal kids turn over by one leg by one leg, but uh, I have no idea why this situation happened. Also, the, my colleague didn't know it. Anyhow. So why is such a baby robot? Because we like to uh, understand how the humans can be intelligent through the process of the building of such robots that develop like humans. So why not such other approaches such as brain science or psychologists? Because it is not sufficient for only one discipline to attack this mystery, but interdisciplinary approach seems promising. So at uh, the brain science, sometimes tend to be so microscopic. For example, this is a figure, like this one. So average part of the brain research work was ants on the electric brain. Okay. If the, this was printed by uh, in 19, 19, 1987, yeah, 1987. And now there's we can see we can observe the uh, active brain something. But still it's very difficult to grasp what can do that you know, and that is uh, and that is the details of the uh, thinking organs. Then on the other hand, also the psychology is mainly the kind of microscopic viewpoint based on the observations. So, the basic idea of the human science, we like to make the sound the robot like humans, but to do that, we have to know what humans are. So there's a little pathway is that some natural science or some literature science. Okay, this guy, science. <laughs> That's why he's here, okay. He invited me here. Okay, so this is the basic idea. So, so what the cognitive development of robotics? So the cognitive development of robotics aims at understanding the human cognitive development process by synthetic or constructive approaches. This core idea is physical environment and social interaction that enables the inconscious structuring through the interaction with the environment include other agents. So the, from now on, I will show some examples of the environment and social interaction together. And the final goal, final symbolic goal of the cognitive development of robotics is language acquisitions. So, uh, as I explained, the robotics, the cognitive plans, the neuroscience together, and the mutual feedback. Okay. So, the robots are generally the level agent as controllable or uh, useful ones for the psychological and social experiment. So, we like to study a pattern of interaction between the, the behavior and the, the infants. But sometimes infants is very difficult to deal with. Therefore, we like to exchange, replace the real infant to the robot by controlling the uh, physical, uh, psychological, uh, center, psychological uh, expense center. Therefore, uh, in that case, the robots are very reliable agent. Or also the computer model to verify the hypothesis. So we like to seek for some principle of the development, the model, the computer model, and then embed into the uh, robot and watch what kind of the uh, interaction may happen with uh, the humans and so on. Of course, in your future, the robots are social, social agent. And then we set up 
explain uh, the, uh, my project. Okay, so the professor Hiroshi Ichiguro, he very famous guy of the Android, and uh, his group is mainly uh, the mainly social interaction, uh, the development of social interaction. And uh, Yasuko Niyoshi University of Tokyo, uh, he, his, his group is focusing on the future simulation and uh, cognitive development. And also, Professor Kohonso at Osaka University, uh, his group is focusing on the you know, uh, generation of the organic movement, and uh, especially the cloning and walking. And this guy, Professor Toshio Inui at the Kyoto University, uh, local people here, uh, he has a different color. Means a different guy, means that the, these three guys are the robotics researchers. And myself, four. And this guy is cognitive neuroscientist. So the best of the imaging studies or some joint research with medical doctors who cares autistic children and Williams syndrome. Because both are two extremes of the, uh, you know, uh, the disorder of the language. So we designed the different kinds of robots, the many robots. So often I, were, I was asked that, so okay, can robots learn that physically? Of course, it is very, very difficult. So some researchers uh, uh, study about the wet type of robotics, but it's still very difficult to see the, how the robots physically blown up or something. Therefore, we decided to design the different kinds of the robots in different kinds of ages, and depending on the different research topic. So actually, this shows some uh, the, you know, uh, different pathway, and depending on the age of the mouse, so we focus on the, some different uh, the research issues. For example, the at 10 months, or actually is our, our robot is uh, seven, seven months, the cloning, or the certain months, the working, or sometimes the physical interaction, and so on. And before uh, the birth, maybe uh, you know, some kind of previous simulation here. Okay, so uh, this is a Professor Yasuo Kunish's blog for the future set of neonatal simulations. So uh, they invent uh, the uh, fetus in the computer. Okay, so supposing that it has 200 muscles and muscle spindles and uh, also were some neural systems, alpha neurons, gamma neurons, and so on. And the other small brain consists of the motor area and sensor motor area, and so on. So uh, through the interaction, uh, okay, so each muscle has kind of the oscillation of the oscillator. So the each muscle interacts with the other muscles, but through the involved, a muscle skeleton system, a neural system, and also the environment in the food. So this indicates some difference between the uh, two, uh, two features. Why it has a very, very uniform sensor distribution, distribution of the tactile sensors. That is different from us. The other one is uh, non-uniform. For example, lip and the fingertips has very, very high density of the tactile sensation. On the other hand, your back has very coarse. So non-uniform distribution of the sense, uh, tactile sensations. So from these, three, uh, these videos, it seems difficult to discriminate two behaviors, but statistically, the two, uh, two, two babies, two fetus, show the different behaviors. And uh, consequently, you found that so the, uh, the fetus with the only thing this region of the tactile sensors uh, may learn some order of behavior or something. Or uh, we have the different kinds. So today I have not so much time, so therefore I see the details of the technical, uh, technical issues. But the, the top left indicates some kind of the uh, learning activity. In this case, the CBCT cannot stand by itself. Therefore, he needs some kind of assistance. So in this case, we analyze the human behavior, how human behaves. My case, I, the first time I fail, and second time I succeed. Or well, someone succeeded from the beginning. So we had the, uh, the princess from Taiwan. She tried five times. She failed five times. So it depends on the individual. So we analyze some of uh, the behavior of each individual. Or the top right, so this is our robot thinking. So uh, what is it? What's going on? Some communication? Or something? No answer? OK, so some. You may suppose that some communication may happen, but uh, it's actually random. One thing is just uh, randomly, one level of copies of the robots. Okay? So now we are using these robots to, uh, we provide these robots to the hospital or the hospital uh, uh, the children, and then um, observe the how these children, you know, observe these robots, or sometimes control these robots. We didn't have any result yet that in the future we'd like to utilize some method to care of these boys. Well, this 
indicates that some kind of longing to grow is to have the artificial masters. And uh, we separate some characters to one. At the beginning, there's just almost no movement, but after uh, two and a half hours, so this guy can move by using this thing forward. Or this indicates kind of some um, indication there for the, the details I speak about. Uh, this is a very famous robot for the robot. And we put it in a white uh, document which has uh, tactile sensors and so on. So, uh, in summary, uh, in our project, we started with the simulations and also the sensory motor mapping and uh, the higher the, uh, higher the cognitions and some social uh, behavior such as uh, joint attention, sort of our imitations, and so on, so on, so on. And also, this indicates more details about research topics. We have done uh, totally 6.5 years, we have done uh, many uh, research results. So uh, among them, so uh, I indicated some study related to the language. Okay. Why is the double limitations? The other one is the large motor joint attention for the class facilitated one. That is uh, uh, the integration of the, uh, you know, the joint attention and electrical addition. The third one is the neural network for the language computation and synthetic processing. Okay. So uh, we pick up the three uh, different studies in relation to the language development. So I briefly catch the first two, and then I, uh, I will give the, you know, the details about the three. Okay. Because uh, of course, you know, all are related to our project, but the, you know, the number two and number three, especially number three is related to the physical uh, environment and social interactions. Okay, the first one is uh, based on the imaging studies, uh, Professor Toshio Inui's group. So they found that uh, uh, some kind of uh, uh, brain lesions, and uh, they have uh, uh, they made some model of the new uh, language vision and the comprehension model. So uh, they found that okay, the mainly consists of growth area and the broad line area 47 and the basic area. They modeled to acquire the synthetic populations and sim uh, single branding. And they found that, based on the image study, they found that these ones. And uh, uh, found uh, the consist uh, this kind of the models. Okay. So this is uh, the imaging study. The next one is kind of uh, some engineering uh, solutions. So uh, we propose some kind of the mutual exclusive selection principle for the learning, the March model mapping. In this case, the vision and auditory. So the situation is like this one. So where the human teacher teaches the robot uh, by using the joint attention and the uh, utterance of the lexicons. So the situation is like this one. I'm not sure the... Okay. Hmm. No sounds. Okay, so the, the caregiver uh, teach or the first gaze to the object and then the object, and then uh, after the level of the object. The, the robot, <coughs> at the beginning, uh, he has no idea about the uh, you know, combination of the left or right, uh, center of the right, or the gaze direction, and also the name of the, you know, uh, the, world, uh, the level of the sensing. So through the interactions, so the robot gradually learns how to gaze with, uh, uh, to make the attention with the caregiver, and also uh, memorize the sign of the uh, the world learner, for instance. So, uh, the, as a result, you know, we improve the, you know, or the, the success rate of the joint attention. So, this is a normal behavior line, the just case uh, behavior line. And uh, also, uh, the mutual uh, uh, exclusion is this one. And also, the march, march means uh, using the, uh, the atlas of the, uh, the world and so on. So the, so the success rate is increasing by using the, uh, the proper model. And also about the, uh, how many words, the number of the attrition levels. So we're uh, be using the mutual uh, match model joint attention and uh, uh, the ones or something. And then the number of words is increased by using this one. Okay. So this is just uh, uh, almost what, 24 minutes past. Okay. So that's uh, uh, today's uh, Future issues. How do robots, the vocalize, uh, vocalize bodies like infants? So, uh, 
As I mentioned, the final goal, or one of the, the final goal of the cognitive uh, developmental robotics is to acquire the language. But based on the physical embed embodiment, uh, we like to start the vocalization. Uh, because, of course, in our uh, American sign language, ASA is, of course, the language, but uh, to start thinking about the vocal, uh, to think about the uh, language acquisitions, vocalization is not easy, but it seems better way to start something. So, uh, the value limitation between the agent with the different artificial characters by the protocol application, that's uh, our uh, research story. So the infant uh, to seem to acquire the phonics without any knowledge about the relationship between the sensory motor system and phonics. That is uh, articulation and listening. Okay. They they seem to uh, they do not seem to know uh, this kind of relationship. Now also uh, the wizard the capability to reproduce the uh, other sound as they are because you know uh, the different hardware. But uh, Somehow they can obtain the phonemes with the, the parents. How can the robot do that? So that this indicates that the human organization system, um, I just copied from the uh, TD's book of the language, a uh, version of the language of the in brain. So it has a very complicated system, and now the middle brain is working to control the sub organizations. And also from a the evolution process, our humans is a much more projection from the cars, so to control the organizations. Okay, so uh, to inspire these works, uh, we just designed a very simple vocal robot, not to so facilitate the humans or under just a very simple uh, silicon shield. So the question is the purpose is to build a robot that acquires the powers of the human caregivers. The design issue is what kind of the mechanism should be embedded from the beginning, and what should be the behavior of the caregiver. Okay. So uh, look at the real situations. So uh, infant speech like queen tend to make its mother up. Or the maternal imitation of the infant's queen increase the vocalization rate of the three months infant. So the mutual imitation is a very good trigger for the infant to uh, make some practice with the utterance. Because you know, the, the mother is very happy if they, the, the, the baby uh, imitates the, the mother's voice. Now also the baby is also happy if the, the mother imitates the, uh, his or her voice. Therefore we conjecture that so it reinforces the infant speech like queen and it helps to find correspond the speech between the queen and phonics. So we decide the you know, robots and the, we put on the artificial vocal cord and the change the silicon shape and then I put the some cell. And also, it has a microphone, and as a uh, sound feature, we extract the, the format F1 and F2 and so on. So, where the format, like the what's the format space? The so result, uh, result frequency change depending on the shape of the vocal track. The vocal feature for the vocal discrimination. And the non human parameters on the first it was as a passive of the fields. So, this indicates the uh, format distribution of Japanese average females. This is R, E, U, A, O. What is this one? Is it garbage? No, just a robot utterance. Therefore, the, the, the robot sound is so, so quite different from the humans. But somehow, we like to make the robot to uh, make a, a get some powers. So uh, also, we put in the very simple, uh, small brain. So an auditory layer and an uh, action layer. So the strategy is, uh, so, okay, so this is some uh, the robot, the, so the blue uh, box indicates the robots. So at the beginning, so the robots randomly queen, uh, 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 like this one. And uh, here's the caregiver. So if caregiver can interpret one of the sound as one of the his or her own vowels, so he or she became his or her own vowels to the robot. So the robot obtained you know, some uh, the hormone the features and stores uh, you know, the, uh, as a hormone the vector here. And also at the same time, also stores uh, some action vectors. Okay, so how the you know how change the shape of the the, the vocal tract. So running is like this one. So uh, as I mentioned, so articulation, long queen, and the paraplegic teaching, and so on. So uh, we connect in spite of the mirror neuron system. So 
This is uh, execution, and this is uh, observation, perception. So we connect to do this one. Therefore, if the robot listens to some sound of the vowel, then this is what can demand how to vocalize each sound. So this is a sound connection. It's very, very like a new system. So we have there some experiment one Japanese guy, my former students, and robots. Okay. So the, after the you know, the uh, interaction, the so robot obtains some you know uh, the question of the Japanese vowels. The attribution vector correspond to the variation with the Japanese vowels. However, there is an accuracy in the correspondence. For example, sometimes caregiver they randomly ah 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 like this one. Therefore, some attribution happen. So we introduce uh, some kind of the uh, subjective criterion of the. Uh, on the uh, heavy learning, less talk or less deformation changes. And we change the heavy learning to the multiple one by uh, considering the, this kind, these kind of issues. And after that, so uh, the distribution uh, you know, converts to the very small area. Okay. So, so that's a result. Okay, here? It's okay? One more. One more. Okay. Ooh. Uh, I'm sorry, we could not make it all. So, so, pretty yeah. okay. so many people think that this is not a baby boss. <laughs> <laughs> Middle age, after karaoke. So we change it to the air. Okay, the second one is e a e a, but for the Japanese people, yeah yeah, it means no 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 like this. And also, our uh, lip shape is also target for the imitations. Uh, oh, and then the, this uh, lip shape imitation accelerated learning three times. And then, so do you feel any pain? So once a month, it's broken. Therefore, all the time I change something. So, uh, of course, this is the first step. Just one bubble. But now uh, we just try to the uh, two vowels and also try to uh, the, the words and so on. And the, of course, you know, the consonant is a big, big challenge. So the group of the Vasily University, they have already set, uh, the designed some the vocal robots with uh, you know, the capability of the pronouncing the, uh, the consonant too. But that's uh, adults. So what we like to seek for the, some kind of the, the baby robot system and so on. So, and also after this uh, experiment, uh, so many people ask me the, what kind of behavior happened in the caregiver side. So, so the infant power development, many people suggest that some the physical quantities of their uh, produ uh, producible values are different. The infant's audition and the articulation adapt to mother's tongue. So the, it's very that the bad process including uh, interpersonal interaction and social interaction. And also, one more thing is caregivers are not biased. They deliberately, you know, uh, kind of to the, the baby. So, the, our anticipation bias our perceptions. The caregivers' anticipation for the infants can bias their perception and the imitation as well. Or the caregivers are not the inter interpretation and the imitation of infants into major behavior develop infant social abilities. So, Maybe so the caregiver has this this kind of uh, uh, you know, bias. So we model that there is kind of bias of uh, two kinds. The one is uh, the perceptual magnet and the actual magnet. We just say the sensory motor magnet. For example, uh, before six months, the babies around the world can discriminate the continuous change of the bubbles. For example, uh, like this one. But after six months, so due to the uh, effect of the, the mother's language, mother tongue, so after the six months, even though we have shown the continuous change of the R to E, they perceive just R or E. This is a, a conceptual categorization. So the sensory motor magnet is like this kind of effect. 
So another one is this affirmative bias. That is, just we say the automated bias, by which the heard bubble is much closer to the expected bubble because the other utterance is the intention of the listener's own utterance. Okay, so we suppose that these two kind of bias may be the caregiver's side uh, affect the, in words, uh, the, the present process of the, uh, the infant the acquisitions. The first, uh, we try to do some the sensory motor uh, uh, sensory motor magnets. Okay, so uh, we gather the you know, the subject, human subject uh, as actually my students, so the, my bias anyhow. So uh, uh, we generate some complete sounds, the uniformly distributed around the, you know, some vowels, and we just ask the subject to imitate the sound, not the vowel, imitate, please imitate the sound that resulted like this one. So they didn't listen to the sound as it is. They like to listen to the sound as their vowels. Okay. So therefore, the outcome is, you know, the variance is converged much, much, much. Now, this is uh, some, you know, some proof of you know, how the human beings have some tendency to the uh, uh, perceptor or sensory motor magnet and so on. Second one is uh, the automated bias. This bias is similar to the placebo effect. Okay. So we have the two groups. One is that the control group is just please imitate the sounds. The experimental group is that oh, please imitate the sound. Sometimes computer imitate your voice. The actual input is the same, but uh, the reaction of the, you know, the subject is different. Okay. So uh, this is uh, some result. Okay. So suppose that at time t, so the uh, subject pronounced something. At t times uh, t times uh, one, the computer will react. At time t plus two, the subject will react again. So we measure some difference of the subject to utterance at time t and t plus two. If the you know, the subject anticipate expect that okay, computer should uh, imitate my own voice. At that time, if supposing that you know. The, the utterance of the time t and t plus 2 is very similar. Therefore, uh, the difference between them, the country group and the expanded group is like this one. So statistically, uh, some significant difference. So for the expanded group, suppose that, OK, the computer sometimes imitate me, and then therefore I imitate you or something. <coughs> this is some difference that happened. So uh, uh, we set up some kind of you know, uh, computer simulations Supposing the, uh, the sensory motor magnet effect and also the automatic bias. Okay. So, as a computation model, uh, this is indicated the automatic bias. Uh, the other voice ST is batched to automatic anticipation SZT mass one and converted SVT is that given by this one. And about the sensory motor, ma uh, sensory motor mapping module, so we use the normalization network to map the other several vulnerable regions onto the listener's one. And by changing the parameters of you know, how much the, the sensory motor magnetic effect uh, yields. And this is some transfer uh, functions. So the automatic bias, the sensitive motor mapping, and active module, and so on. So uh, this indicates uh, some result of the complex generations. So we suppose that this is some uh, the methods of the bubble of divisions, and uh, this is a room, and the red one indicates some kind of the infant robots bubble divisions. So this uh, method will indicate the, uh, some uh, primitive of the, the powers. So uh, if we have two uh, biases, so where the blue and the red indicate some interaction between the caregiver and the infants. So as you can see, if the, uh, the, uh, the mother has two biases, so the interaction is right this one, and then almost collectively the, the, the infant value is converged to the right place. On the other hand, if Okay, so this indicates no autonomic bias, only the sensory motor magnet effect. They were converged very quickly back at long, uh, long position. While the, in this case, no magnetic bias, there were only the autonomic bias. Therefore, the, the directions may be okay, but no convergence. No is a bias or the chaotic situation happened. So actually, we need uh, some, you know, the balance between the uh, two biases. So this indicates the sensory motor magnets, and this particular axis indicates the ordinary bias, 
And if we choose carefully the parameters, we obtain the very you know, good interaction. Otherwise, the, the wrong, wrong correspondence. OK, the summary. So cognitive <coughs> robotics is a promising approach to new science of the human cognition with design theory. And physical environment and social interaction are keys for robots to, or infants to develop their cognitive function. The design of robots and their environments as close as humans produce a new research issue to be attacked. So the many people claim to be, why not using the speaker? As I explained in the world, by supposing the physical environment, whoever the less talk or less deformations, the, the robots obtain uh, they know the, the powers. So the physical environment enabled to introduce subject criteria such as less talk and less deformation, easy to work with. And now we introduce the uh, expression to realize a time taking with the caregiver toward the natural interaction. Now we are designing more realistic infant robot robot with artificial brain. Okay, the design theory uh, policy is like this one. Okay, I have already passed some time, so I just speed up. Anything yeah, that's uh, to, okay, we like to study about the interaction between the caregivers and infants. But the infant is very difficult to control. Therefore, we, like, we need some more realistic baby robots. So uh, to study about some emotional interaction, that means you know, uh, to realize some kind of the, some real uh, emotional interaction. So uh, we designed these robots. And uh, the one by students, uh, actually, in case of the Android, the Professor Hiroshi Shigeru, he is a good at uh, you know, the designed Android, and he has his own copy. But the, in that case, we get the phone from a real person. So in that case, the, uh, maybe the humans should stay one hour. I forgot exactly. Therefore, they are very, very painful face, like this one. So the, so the, the, you know, the normal face of the Android is all the time, like uh, that. This person case or something. So in this case, the, in case of the baby, we cannot do that, of course. Therefore, the, my, one of my students uh, picked up some good picture of the baby, and then make a model and the clay model and the, get the hall and the various. So uh, next to video clips, also you, know, you can see in the YouTube. So this is with skin, and this is with art skin. Okay. So it has uh, almost 20, more than 20 degrees of freedom. And uh, it has some uh, artificial skin. Just we say uh, human skin, human skin there or something. So well, in, the in the video, you cannot perceive the you know, touching. But uh, if you touch, it's so realistic. And in this case, the eye is mimic, no, no TV camera. Because if we use a TV camera, it's not so realistic. So anyhow, this only shows us the head, but now we have the torso, and then like, the, like some interaction, like this kind of movement. Anyhow, uh, so uh, uh, management is, uh, these are the group leaders of the Professor Hiroshi Shiguro, Kokosoda, Yasaku Miyoshi, Toshiyomi, and also the Professor of the Project, Dr. Yuichi uh, Yoshikawa, and uh, Dr. Katsumiwa, and uh, these three candidates. Okay, uh, thank you for your attention. We have 12 minutes for discussion. Please wipe your hand and say your name and presentation. No questions? Everything clear? I'm not sure. Yes, the reception is closing, therefore, I could give you the video. Yeah, I'm staying here, so uh, you can ask me personally or any questions. Okay. Uh, you model the caregiver side or if what role? Ah, if if I understand your questions, did we model the caregiver side, right? Yeah. So in case of the you know, sensory motor magnet and uh, automatic bias, that the two bias is uh, uh, one of the assumptions of the two models, the behavior of the caregiver. And uh, we uh, just a you know, simple uh, psychological ex experiment indicates that maybe human may have such kind of tendency to have the sensory motor magnet and also the automatic bias. That's the uh, some simulation uh, result of the you know, 
interaction. So in that case, we support that. We model the caregiver's behavior of the observers, interact with the infants. Did that answer to the question? Uh, my question is, uh, model caregiver side with robot. Oh, robots. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> OK, yeah, right, right. So uh, yes, you are right. So uh, there are infants and uh, robot caregiver. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, no, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I suppose maybe the parents still, right? <laughs> so uh, because you know, we, can, we can get some you know, uh, important concept before the experiment with the caregivers, but uh, we cannot uh, get the, such a kind of uh, you know, concept from the infants, from their parents, therefore. Oh, 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 oh yeah, uh, robot infants with robot caregivers. Yeah, robot infants and caregivers, uh, we have some. But, uh, robot infants interacting with robot caregivers. Oh, the first robots. Yeah. Oh, OK. The interest of the simulation is the both in the uh, robots. Yeah. I mean, but uh, you would suppose that they are one. They are yeah. robot infant and they are robot caregiver. OK, that's a kind of challenge. OK, <laughs> next time. Ah, on the similar symptoms, what would be a robot monkey? What would be the difference between your robot and a monkey? Oh, I didn't have to have such a question, but uh, sometimes we suppose that, as, as you mentioned, uh, we suppose that robots so handicapped. That means that some, uh, in some sense, similar behavior to children. Or some, some uh, the vocal system, to like uh, uh, the Union syndrome. Because the, in the case of the former, still it's very difficult for the robot to generate uh, the speech uh, by his or her own. Just some replay train or some uh, already given the model or something template. But uh, the, our desire is that robots, you know, by him or herself to generate, to speak or something, just cover. So in that sense, they're very similar to the autistic children. But in case of the real syndrome, for example, the AI system uh, prepared as uh, you know, dictionaries, uh, the many lexicons, and some templates, template templates, that's a kind of the normal uh, voice recording system. In that case, speak too much. But the system does not realize, does not know the real meaning of the sentence and so on. So two extremes. Therefore, the my desire is that, so in that case, in the former case, it is in a sense similar to the monkey. The monkey cannot speak, but to, uh, I'm not so sure what the difference in reality. Be because I suppose maybe monkey, some primate researchers, uh, you know, proud of their monkey, right? So, uh, I suppose maybe monkey also has some capabilities and many things as a different from the humans. But the robots is still, you know, less performance, you know, the very, very handicapped and you know, in some sense of the development disorder. Therefore, even though compared to the monkey, still, uh, I suppose maybe, uh, you know, robot still is uh, uh, less performed than monkey. Did I answer to the questions? Yes, um, you say that you want the robots to learn language, uh, but language is not communication of uh, strings of sound. Right? So in order to develop uh, the language, you have to have a conceptual attention system. And then uh, you will have to have the abstract meaning, much as Massimo just mentioned, the Civil Park before, which are uh, cross language, cross language language that enables uh, this mapping to uh, come about <laughs> sensory motor and, and conceptual intentional. And in most cases, uh, you will have to have to deal with abstract uh, entities, so entities that will, you will not perceive. So how are you going to treat uh, UP anaphora? Uh, how are you going to treat uh, ellipsis? How are you going to treat uh, concept thoughts. How are you going to treat with WHO? <laughs> and I could go on and on and on and on. So uh, I don't really understand when you said that, uh, I mean, you must have 
Yeah, I'm, like, besides Kanji, the, it is very easy to understand that in the comparative cognitive uh, science, the, the, we have we have the, have the same ancestor, but on the, the different branch now. So we can compare uh, human ability and Kanji or chimpanzee ability, and where is a uh, uh, common part and what is a uh, different part. And common part will be uh, acquired before the planting. But uh, com about the development, um, we cannot compare like a chimpanzee and human baby and robot baby and human baby. That is not on the, uh, the same lineage. Mm -hmm. so but some researchers mentioned there are some there are similar pathways of the autistic children and chimpanzee. For example, the imitation, the attachment is necessary to teach the imitation of something or other similar things. Therefore, very, very superficially, I believe there, there are some common parts of things. So, in that case, it's why originally I thought. Um, uh, you found that two biases are necessary, auto-mirroring and magnet biases, to do imitation. I think it's a great finding, because we can uh, take auto-mirroring as a, as a cue to integrate this area of the study and the language acquisition study, and uh, we can also study what animals does auto-mirroring auto and so on, and what is the mechanism of auto-mirroring. This will be interesting. Yes. 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 Actually, uh, we said project the automated virus is not limited to this one, but we can like, I like to realize, uh, generalize this kind of uh, the concept to the development itself. Well, look, it is quite an engineering feat for which you, you must be really complimented, but it has anything to do with what we know about how children you know, acquire even the sounds of them. You know, a few hours after birth, we know that they can make a difference between the mother's tongue and another language. They already can do that. We know that they are sensitive to all the uh, phonological contrast in all the languages of the world, and then they lose it, you know, when they get to the 11 month. We know that they have a categorical perception, so you have a continuum of variation of the first four months, you know, and it, it makes a sharp you know, transition. So all the things we know about how, you know, children do this, it seems to me completely different from what we're seeing here. Uh, yeah, as you mentioned, uh, this is a kind of the ending a solution. So uh, <coughs> we end up some kind of the, some artificial cues and so on. But uh, actually, we like to uh, realize some new shape, as you mentioned, at the beginning, the parents and then uh, you uh, limited the performance and then again like this one. So uh, actually uh, in our group, uh, we have shown, for example, uh, in case of the joint attention, so we suppose that immature vision first, and then, so at the beginning, so the infant is very close, very dark image as a whole, well. and then gradually changing, and this bias uh, enables uh, uh, the infant to get the more, uh, you know, the accelerated from joint attention. That that's kind of the story is a very similar situation of the infants. Uh, we believe that also in this case, the infants is uh, uh, starting from the very, very immature stage and then gradually uh, happen. Actually, today, we, I skip, the, due to the no time, I skip the, some details about the development process of the motor skills. So at the beginning, the motor skills and also the, uh, the perception of the listening skills are also variable and measured. And this makes, you know, uh, uh, good things for the infant to develop because you know at the beginning uh, capture the whole things as uh, uh, everything together and then gradually separated. If the infant has uh, from the beginning, if the infant has a very fine acuity of the vision and fine acuity of the perception, it's very difficult to find some right correspondence. So today I have not shown the, the, this result, but uh, if you have time, I'd like to show that this kind of situation. Of course, as you mentioned, it's very, very different from the children, the other children happen, but we would have to uh, find some kind of the common essential part between the human development and the development. Okay, uh, it's time to drink. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much.